guys, how's everybody doing? And welcome back to the channel. We're gonna continue on with what we've been doing and that's working on the 47RE build. Um, I've done something just a little bit different within my playlist. Uh, I went in and created a whole new playlist for the people who just want to see the 47RE build. Um, there's a whole playlist in there and I'll link it up here. If you guys just wanna watch that and nothing else, then you're going to be able to just go to that playlist and watch just the 47 build. Uh, it also will go in the second gen Cummins build uh, playlist, but I know there may be some people out there that just wanna watch this. And also I wanna say I am not a professional builder at all. This is the first transmission that I've ever built. Um, I just have the confidence in me to be able to do this with the help of the uh, ATS or AT SG book. Uh, these are very, very, very uh, detailed books and to help you out uh, in the build of your transmission. This is something that can be accomplished if you have some of the proper tools and just a little bit of mechanical knowledge. It, this, I mean, this is, I was very, I, I was kind of, uh, I was worried about doing this in the beginning, but after getting it apart, seeing the pieces and parts, how they work, how they go together, um, I'm confident enough in myself to be able to do this. So that's why we're doing it. Um, if you guys have not already done so, I do appreciate it. Uh, the link, first couple links in the description is always hot shots. You guys need any oil, uh, fuel additives. They now have gas additives. They have, even have gun oil too, some transmission oil. Um, first link in the description is always hot shots. That's coupon code CM73 if you guys want a 10% discount. And also, there's a new link right below that. It's just an in general Amazon link. If you guys are ever shop on Amazon and you want to help the channel out for absolutely free, just use that link and do your shopping on Amazon. So with that being said, what we're going to do today, we're going to continue on. Like I said, we're going to do the direct drum um, and we're going to replace the clutches and steels in it. We have an apply piston in here uh, that has a couple of lip seals that's going to have to be put out. I did make a little press tool uh, that we're going to use. I don't know how much tension these springs are under. There's nine springs underneath this little retainer cap and then this snap ring. So we need to get these out of there uh, to be able to lift that apply piston out to change those lip seals. And also I wanna go through and show you what Firepunk has done uh, to make it so you can get an extra steel and an extra uh, friction inside your direct drum. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and set you up on the tripod and start getting this one tore apart. All right, starting off, you got a wavy snap ring on top. Get that out of your way. Inspect it. Make sure there's no, it's not broken, it's not cracked. And then you're going to have your apply plate. And then you're going to have your frictions and steels in here. So in the factory one for the 47, you're gonna have one, two, three, four frictions, and one, two, three, four steels. In the Firepunk set, we're gonna have five of each. So we're gonna be replacing those. The way that we're going to accomplish that, as you can see how this end plate is just all thick one piece. The one Firepunk sends me. You can see they've milled a groove on there to be able to allow an additional friction and steel. Just like the other two packs, you can see how much clutch material is actually left on this. This is the this is the Woodruff diesel that I received in the trade, and this one was uh, supposedly only had 5,000 miles on it. So there again, we're going to save these for what reason, I don't know. Um, I, I was gonna save them and put them in that other transmission I have, but uh, I'm still not certain yet. It may probably get traded off to uh, help me in the aid of the uh, torque converter. So right now we're gonna take this over to my press, set that on there, press that down a little bit, get this snap ring out of the way, and uh, be able to take this apply piston out, bring it back over here, and change out the lip seals. All right, that actually worked out pretty good. You can remove your staff ring, 
remove your spring cover and then that's what I was talking about right there there's your nine springs that uh, have tension on the apply piston on your direct drum apply piston so we'll go ahead and move those springs out of the way and then we'll be able to pull out this apply piston here You can see right there is the lip seal on the outside edge of that apply piston. And then there's also a bushing that I forgot about inside here that we have to replace too. All right, before I start with uh, assembly, I want to show you guys a couple of differences between the front forward drum and the direct drum as far as your lip seals. This still has a lip seal on the outside and it is facing down, but your inner seal on this one is actually on the drum itself on the inside right here uh, both lip seals actually still face down um, but you will not be able to get to it to get started what they've done is since this one faces down on the inner part of your drum it just slides right over and on the outer part of the drum for your outer lip seal there's a bevel right here machined or milled into that that you'll be able to just push that down with just a little bit of force just make sure you do have it uh lubed up with some transmission fluid really really well so it slides and also after you put it on and before you put it on uh put transmission fluid all over your lip seal before you get started or before you put it back in place uh, before i do anything i'm going to go ahead and take out this bushing and then put the new one back in its place it's pressed in there just <clears throat> below the surface a little bit. There's a bevel in there. Um, it looked to me like this one wasn't in far enough. If you look, there's a little nick in it right there where it was pressed up against something. Um, I believe it should go in to that bevel if I'm not mistaken. Alright, we're going to start by putting in the bushing for the direct drum. I'm going to put a nice coat of transmission fluid on this outside edge just to help it slide in there and then also put just a little bit on this inside edge of the direct drum. So we got that in there. Right now we're just flush. I need to get it down below just the surface a little bit. So I gotta find something that's the right diameter and get that down below that surface. There's actually a line inside the direct drum right here. So I'm wondering if that's the end point to where you need to push your bushing in at. All right, with our bushing fully installed, got the direct drum cleaned up. Now we can start with the assembly. Uh, we're gonna grab our apply piston make sure and put your lip seal on the right way there's a little groove in there make sure that groove is pointing down we can take our new one put just a little bit of transmission fluid on it and walk it around the apply piston
grab a little bit of transmission fluid and we'll put on that. Now the apply piston is ready to go. To get the lip seal off of the inside of the drum, just take your fingers, walk it around it just like so. And then you can grab a hold of it and pull it right out. Just like that. And make note, like I said before, on how that comes out. On this one here, the lip seal is going to be pointing down. And it does show you, if you pick up the manual, it does show you how this, these two rings are to be, or these two uh, lip seals are to be put in place. So I'll go grab the uh, proper lip seal for this and get it put in also. All right, with that in place, we can grab our apply piston, give it a little firm push. Make sure that's in place right. And then we can go ahead and start by putting our springs in and then take it back over the press and put our uh, spring cover on along with our retainer. When you put your springs back in, you can see how I skip two pegs and put two pegs in and skip two pegs. All right, now that's ready to go. We can take it over to the press and put it in. Uh, what I did with these tabs here is I just made sure and put each one of those tabs in one of the two peg spaces where there wasn't any springs. All right, instead of using the air pressure, I'm going to just do this by hand and press it down there slowly, making, every sure, making sure everything's lined up properly. All right, now with that done in place, we're gonna start by putting, we're gonna go ahead and put in our, our clutches and frictions. I'm sorry, our steels and our frictions. Uh, start with a uh, plate. friction This is what I saw about here, your, your top plate, that's the one that's milled. So you wanna make sure and put your flat surface down if you're doing extra clutches and friction, or extra clutches and steels. 
Then we can go ahead and get our spring. And that's all there is to it. Now this direct drum is ready to go back in the transmission. And like I said, that pretty much takes care of the direct drum. So uh, with that being said, that's pretty much gonna be all there is to doing the forward direct drum. Um, there will be a new band put on when we when we do the housing build. Uh, that'll be a separate video. Next thing I need to do is get the uh, overdrive assembly taken care of because I'm going to be using my intermediate shaft for my alignment tool, a long piece of pipe to be able to press everything back together. So that'll be coming up next is the overdrive build. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video. If you guys don't mind, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already done so, and we'll talk to you guys later on.